1 Timothy 2 and 9. You can't show your daughter the ways of the world, right. which are, when you, when, you, when you go on things like Instagram, TikTok, our women are, what they doing? Half naked. Half naked, twerking. All I, every time you turn on TikTok, you go, all you see is twerking. Any, any form of social media, you see our women twerking, shaking their butt. That's not what our daughters and our sons need to see. They need to see God's law. Read that. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. And like mine also, that women adore themselves in modest apparel. So this is the thing that we have, we have, we have to teach our children. This is, this is what you have to teach your daughter. Read. That women... And like men also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So it says that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. What is my what's his name, my sister? Deja. And what Asia, right? What is modest apparel? Exactly. What does it mean to adorn? Adorn. It means to like clothe yourself. So it says, read it again. And like men are also, that women adore themselves in modest apparel. So these are the things that our young women have to learn. Even even you, my sister, even you, uh, Asia and Deja, these are the things that y'all have to also do because your part of your teaching is you showing it by action as well. It says, women adorn themselves in modest apparel. You said it. Modest apparel is what again? Deja, you just said it. Covering up. What else? Covering up with dresses, no pants. So those are our sisters shouldn't wear pants. And why? Why shouldn't our sisters wear pants? Bring it out. That's true too. But another thing, another thing, when our sister wear pants, what what can a man see when you got on pants? You got on tight fitted, form fitted clothing. What can a man see? Huh? He see your figure, your body. He see your camel toe, he see your butt, he see your whole shape. Those right. are things that's reserved for your husband. Right. That's, that's right. why the Bible says a woman should adorn herself in modest apparel. That's right. With shamefacedness and sobriety. With shamefacedness and sobriety. Meaning a woman is supposed to shy away from men. But what we see in our communities, a lot of our sisters jump in a man's face and curse him out. Right. Put a finger in his face, ready to fight him. Right. And, and, and there's no justification for a man hitting the sister, but when the sister doing all that, smacking the brother, hitting on, what they expect? A, a man is going, at, at some point, the man going to defend himself, and then it's a problem. But our sisters, but if our sisters do this, read it again. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Women adorn themselves in modest apparel, meaning they clothe themselves, but they're not showing off their body, read. With shamefacedness and sobriety. With shamefacedness and sobriety, meaning they, they, they walk with a shy content. They're not quick to jump in the man's face. They're not quick to jump and be the first one to answer. They let them, they, they, a woman is supposed to have that, that, that quiet and shy personality because she, Wait for the man to lead her where she needs to go. That's what that's the that's what the that's the biblical understanding of how a woman should walk. Read. And not with brought in hair or gold or pearls or costly array. She's not supposed a woman is not supposed to let her life be defined by the clothing that she wears, the jewelry that she wears. She wearing all this jewelry so that she can get attention. And that's what goes on in our communities. Our, our sisters, our women where they, they get their hair done, why? So they can go to the club and, and, and get the attention of a man. That's not how our sister's supposed to li live. And that's the thing that you have to apply and you have to show your daughter the same. So when she grow up, she can actually get a righteous man that's gonna marry her for her, the, her for who she is. The, 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 for, so he can add to her value as a woman. Not so he can just look at her for a piece of meat and have sex with her, then lay leave her, and she, now she got kids, and she by her, she got left with left to raise children by herself. Right. Read. Verse ten. But which becoming women professing godliness with good works. So women professing godliness with good works, meaning that woman is, she says she uphold God's laws and she keep the commandments of God. Right. Give me Deuteronomy twenty two and five, because the sister, the sister uh, Deja that just left, she mentioned that. Modest clothing was a dress and things of that nature. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that 
which pertaineth unto a man. So it says the Bible says that a woman should not wear that which pertains to a man. What is it that women wear that pertains to men? Read on. You say you don't know? Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What is it that men wear that women read it again? Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What garment do men wear that he should that men shouldn't wear? That, that's for women. Yep. Well, what, what specific article of clothing? Huh? No. Nope. When you go to the when you go to the bathroom, how do you determine the men bathroom from the women bathroom? The, the women's restroom has a lady with a dress on. And the men's bathroom has a man with pants on. So that's what that's what this is referring to. Read it again from the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the woman is not supposed to wear that which pertains to a man. Which is that's pants. Because you ever heard the term, I wear the pants in the house? Who's supposed to be the head of the house? The men. The men wear pants. Because when a sister wear pants. She put on a manly spirit. And that's another reason why a lot of women, they're not shamefaced. They are, they're quick to jump in the box because they got, they went to college, they got them a degree, they got this high paying job, and they feel like they above the man. Bring it out. That's not so. That's not, so, that's not according to the Bible, that's not supposed to be like that. That's actually out of order. Not saying there's anything wrong if a sister got, got degrees and she got a good job. There's nothing wrong with that. But when she used that to usurp the authority over a man, that's when the problem comes in. Because the natural order, biblically, is that the man is the head, and the woman follows after the, after the, um, the man. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. How old are you, sis? 29. 29. So you, you're not extremely young where you don't, you're not familiar with something. When? When did our sister start wearing pants? Do you know? Huh? Yeah, about when? You familiar with our history when we was in slavery? Yeah, that's right. A little bit. When our women, when you, I know you've seen many slave movies. When our women was picking cotton, what did they have on? They had how they had the dress on, like right here. See right here on the image? So if, if our sister was going to them, what happened? So the, the, the women wearing pants, even even to the point of like leggings. Leggings are actually long underwear. They That's right. They are undergarment. It's supposed to go under your clothes. Because when you put on leggings, what do you expose? Right. You actually expose your body. Because if you if you walking around with leggings on and you don't have a coat, you have a short shirt on. A man can see your whole full figure. He can see your camel toe. He can see everything. Right. That takes away the imagination. If the man is not, you know, only your husband is supposed to be able to see your secret parts. And that's the, the what we just read, the modest behavior. Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Uh-huh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Uh-huh. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So the, the Bible says a man that wears a dress and a woman that wear pants, it's an abomination before God. Right. And when, an abomination before God, meaning that he's gonna, he gonna cast you out of his face. When it's going to, when, the, when destruction comes, he will be destroyed with the destruction. Get that in Zephaniah 1 and 8. Because yeah. that's cross, that's considered cross-dressing. And you see it, when, when, when you see a man, uh, I only know some of these rappers' names these days, but when you see a man with a dress, <laughs> what type of spirit he got on? He act like a woman. And a lot of the same thing with us, a lot of the sisters, a lot of our sisters that wear pants, they act like men. They switch and, and all of that stuff. They, 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 you, can see, you can see physically, yeah, it's a woman, but the spirit that is on her, she got a manly spirit. Because any woman that'll jump in a man's face, that's a manly spirit. Bring it out. Because that's not the natural. Because even when you, if you look at your grandmother, I don't know if, if your mother, grandmother's still living, that's, that wasn't the mannerisms, of, that, that's not the mannerisms that they had. Even when we look back, uh, what, 60, 70 years ago, a lot of our grandparents, they actually was closer to having that level of respect. But 
It was a time they came in and broke up the black family. Bring it out. Broke that broke the order that was once held in high esteem. Right. And the women wearing women wearing pants didn't come around to what the nineteen was the nineteen sixties. Nineteen sixties. That's that's a very new thing on the earth. That came about during the white women's movement where they was trying to get into the, the workforce. Bring it out. During the same time you had the Black Panther movement on, at one point our sisters was backing the black men with the Black Panther movement and then a white woman came in and no, nah, come over here and fight this women's right movement. And it had nothing to do with us. But that's where that transition came from. Right. I'll read that. Zephaniah chapter one verse eight. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children. So it says it will come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. Do you have any idea what that's referring to? So the day of the Lord's sacrifice when the Most High bring judgment on this earth. Right. When he judged the nations for what they've done to the children of Israel, which is the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that's the Lord's day of the Lord's sacrifice. It's going to be bloodshed. It's not, Christ's not coming back to give hugs and kisses. He actually bring, it out. bring destruction and death and murder. It's going to be an ugly sight when he come back. So that's what the Lord's sacrifice is. Read. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. He said he's going to punish the princes and the king's children. And he says, and all such are strange apparel. So if Christ come back and our sisters are wearing pants, they're going to be destroyed. If brothers not brothers, they wearing dresses. They're going to be destroyed. Right. Because that's strange apparel. That's strange before the Most High God. Now let me ask you this: Do you know what your Do you know your nationality? No. Where do you find yourself on this sign right here? Now you say you, you Judah and Gad. What makes you say that? Um, my grandmother and my great grandmother are part of this. From your on your your mother's mother and grandmother. You don't know your You don't know who your father was. I know him, but I don't know. Is he? Is he this, was he was just looking at him, would, you, would he be considered so-called black man? So you would be from the tribe of Judah. Right. You would be from the tribe of Judah from the nation of Israel. Now read that Deuteronomy 28, uh, 15. Deuteronomy so this is how, because your nationality, you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right. And I'm going to show, I'm going to go through a few scriptures and show you how I can say that standing here today. Because what, at one point in time, I called myself an African-American. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass that thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Are you familiar who wrote the book of Deuteronomy? So Deuteronomy is written by Moses to the Israelites, which we know today are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So he's saying it shall come to pass, meaning something will happen the, in the future to the Israelites. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So if the Israelites chose not to do what God commanded them to do, then curses will come upon us, meaning bad things. What are some of those curses? Jump to 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. It says, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So the most I said, that the Israelites will serve their enemies if they break his commandments. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. And the Lord going to send them, send them to do it because we broke his commandments. We broke his rules. Read. In hunger. In hunger. Who owns the Burger King? Huh? Who owns the food for less? Do we own it? Do we own the, the Burger King of food for less? Walmart? Jewels? So when we go to buy our food, we, we go get our groceries and all of that. We're serving our enemies for our home, to satisfy our home. We're going to our enemies for those things. Read. And in thirst. And in thirst. If you live, you, you live in an apartment house, you live in a house, the water supply, I don't know if you pay a water bill or who are you paying that water bill to? The village adult. The village adult. And who, who's... I know, it, I know the, the, the mayor is, is, is black, but the white, man, the white man, you serve your enemy for thirst. Bring it you out. Go and get a bottle of water, you get the Sani, Aquafini, uh, Ice Mountain, whatever water you buy. Do we own the stuff, the, the facilities that bottle those waters? Nope, we serving our enemies for our, to, to satisfy our thirst. Read. 
And in nakedness. And in nakedness. Who put who put who produce who owns the manufacturing company, the clothes that we go buy? The white man. Read. And in want of all things. And in want of all things. You, before you went and got that, got the house that you wanted to get. I don't know if you, if you got a loan or whatever. Have you got it? Who owns? Who really owns that house? Because you gotta pay the tax. The, the house is on land that you gotta pay taxes for. Right. You can pay a mortgage. You can pay a mortgage for thirty years and then be done. You, the house is paid off, but what you still gotta pay? And what happens if you don't pay them taxes? They're gonna take the house. You search for in one of all things. If you want to get married, you, when you have children, you got to get your birth certificate from them. You got to get your social security card from them. That's a curse. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Come here real quick. I want, so I want you to see the sign. Yeah. Come here, Asia. Who put these yokes of iron on my neck? Bring it out. The white man. You seen these? My brother, my brother Clyde. You seen it? Who put them yokes of iron on that? Who is that? The white man. That's Read right. that again, that last part. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So it's very specific as to who that is. He shall put a yoke of iron on our neck. The so-called white man. We the only, who else, who are, what other nation of people you know that happened to? Nobody. That's how we know that we are the Israelites. That's we are the right. Israelites that the Bible speaks of. If that's happened to us and only us, read. Until he have destroyed thee. But do we have yokes of iron on our neck today? We don't. And, that, and that, <laughs> it says, read that again, the last part. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So he says he put a yoke of iron on your neck until he have destroyed thee. The yokes of iron are off our neck because we just like a dog that if you got them them, them, them invisible uh, collars where they go to they go a certain point and it gets shot if they go too far. After a while, is that dog will keep going to that line. After a while, that dog will go to that line and know he gonna know the parameters how far he can go and he not gonna go there because that shot don't feel good. That's, that's right. the same thing that happened to us because when you look in slavery, you can put the sign down. When we, when we was in slavery, when we tried to run away, what happened to us? We got killed. When they caught us, they hung us, shot us down, all that. So after a while, it was like, you know what? They killing us off. You know what? We just gonna stay. Right. We ain't even gonna run no more. Why we gonna run? We gonna get shot up. Right. We gonna get killed. They gonna catch us and they gonna lynch us. Right. So then we stop running. So once they get, they conditioned us to, oh, we got them now. They took the chains off because now we not gonna run. Right. They know they know they had us. And like you said, it's in other forms. We still got the chains on our neck. They just not visible. Cause we not gonna go be with certain things that we're not gonna do because we know if we do it, they gonna shoot us down in the street. That's why we can get pulled over. And you can you ain't you can think you can talk because you know the laws, but if you talk too slick, it's they gonna do the same thing they did to the slaves to in slavery. Bring it out. Kill us because we steal their slaves. Right. But we don't know that. We think that we because we 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 think that we got some a, a, a certain level of freedom that we can do. No, we can't. We don't got the same rights right. as the so-called white men in the other nations. Read 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So it says the Lord gonna bring us into Egypt again. What, what, what were we, you familiar with us, with the Israelites being in Egypt? What was we doing? What was the Israelites doing in Egypt when they were in Egypt? Huh? Yeah. They were slaves. You would you agree with that? Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So he said he's gonna bring the, the Israelites into Egypt again. If you know if you know anything about the Bible, did the, did the Israelites ever go physically back into the land of Egypt? They didn't. Would you agree? He said no. So read that. So what, what is what is Egypt talking about then? Read that. Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. It's talking about slavery. It's talking about bondage. So back to 68. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. 
and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. He says, the Lord gonna bring you into Egypt again, or slavery again, read. With ships. With ships. How do we get here over to America? Ships. On transatlantic cargo slave ships. That's right. And that's documented in the Bible. That's Bible history. So his, our history is biblical history. That's shows right. us that we are the Israelites. That's right. We are the children of God. This is our Bible. This is our record book. Ain't no white man. In, well, I ain't gonna say no white man in the Bible, but this Bible is a black man's book. Right. That's right. Because it talks about our history. That's right. Things that we must do to get the kingdom of God. Bring it out. Read. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee. So just as it was written in the Bible, that's how it happened. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. We'll never see our homeland again. We don't even know that we from that our homeland is Israel. That's our land. But right now, imposters are living there. Fake Jews are living there. People that call themselves Jewish or Israeli. That lets you know that they are not the people that's supposed to be in their land. They, they false imposters. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. What happened when we got out those slave ships? Bring it out. Sisters, you got, I know you got a flyer. Make sure you give us to get in contact with us. Read. And then you shall be sold unto your enemies. We were sold on the slave auction blocks when we got off those slave ships, read. For bond men and bond women. We were sold for slave men and slave women, read. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you, meaning no man is going to save us out of these conditions. You had Marcus Garvey rise up, and what happened? That movement came and passed. Malcolm right. X, Martin Luther King. Right. Even when you go back to Nat Turner, all, it, it came and went. Ain't no man gonna save us out of these conditions. The only per only person that's gonna save us is the Black Messiah when he come and deliver that's us. That's right. And the only way we gonna be delivered in righteousness is if we keeping the commandments. If we ain't keeping the commandments, we're gonna be destroyed. Right. With the destruction that come on this land. We used to scream Black Power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.